Yeah, in in terms of naturally occurring DMT in our bodies, it's a very well. You know, one thing about DMT is it's very short acting. Um, so it is made in the human body. Um, it might not be made in the pineal. Nobody's really looked that carefully. Uh, but there's made in lung. It's made in uh, adrenal gland. It's made in red blood cells. It's made in brain. Um, it's made in liver. Um, and one interesting, th and it's broken down very quickly. There's an enzyme in the body called monoamine oxidase. Um, and that breaks down DMT within a few minutes of its you know, formation. Um, and that's why intravenous DMT had such a short effect is that monoamine oxidase would break it down. Uh, and it would be half gone in five minutes you know, in, in the bloodstream and then half gone again you know, from the amount in the first few minutes and then half again. You know, so, um, so within about a half hour, there wouldn't be any at all. And the concentration would drop very quickly. Um, and so that's happening in the body all the time is being made, broken down, made, broken down, made, broken down. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's uh, swallowed, um, it's broken down in the stomach and in the intestines. Um, there's a lot of monoamine oxidase in the stomach and the intestines. Um, and so that prevents oral DMT from being active. Um, if it's injected, then it kind of bypasses the stomach and, and uh, the intestinal monoamine oxidase and can last longer. But still, it's very short. But it's completely ineffective if swallowed. So what you have to do is block the uh, monoamine oxidase with certain chemicals called monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And through some amazing feat of preliterate chemistry, the Amazonian natives stumbled upon or combined whatever. Um, I don't know how they did it, but they found that one plant contains DMT and one plant contains an enzyme inhibitor. Combine them, you can drink DMT and it's orally active. So it starts working in a half hour, lasts for three or four hours. And um, you can, you know, maneuver a lot more comfortably within that state than you can when you're just smoking it or injecting it. Um, also, one thing about DMT that's made naturally, or even if it's administered from the outside, is that it's very hard, you know, is, is that it's transported across the blood-brain barrier into the brain. Um, so there's this kind of barrier that exists, um, kind of, you know, covering the brain called the called the blood brain barrier and uh you know it's just very tightly adhered to uh, you know cells uh, um, of the veins and the arteries um that supply blood to the brain um and they're very tightly linked very hard for compounds to get into the brain uh because of this particular barrier um but certain things are transported into the brain um in a way called active transport, it requires energy. Um, then the brain only actively transports substances into its confines that it seems to need, like blood sugar, certain amino acids, things like that. And um, there were a couple of Japanese studies in the 1970s or so where they demonstrated that DMT is actively transported into the brain. So it seems like the brain requires DMT somehow for normal function, which is a sort of a intriguing possibility. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't, you know, it's, it's really unclear if the brain makes DMT. It probably does. But even if the brain didn't make DMT, um, then there still is a way for DMT to get into the brain from the outside, from lung-produced DMT or red blood cell-produced DMT. And that's through the, the active transport of DMT across the blood-brain barrier. Um,